Hey, I was so disappointed. I was so heartbroken because I love this singer. You know that say, never meet your idol. The last two stories, I've, I saved them for last because, oh my gosh, from who this person is, it does not surprise me that they acted this way. And I would have loved to be on that flight to tell her to calm down. Like that would have been fun or not. I don't know. Anyways. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, A Mindful Nomad. I'm Veronica and on this channel we share everything travel related from stories of my time in the skies as an Emirates flight attendant to tips and tricks I've learned. So I'll be honest with you, I wasn't planning on doing any more Emirates related videos, but because I tried one out and it did well and I had a few comments of people asking me to tell stories, I said, you know what, let's do it. Let's give the people what they want. And I thought, I thought it would be really cool to share um, some celebrity stories um, because there are quite a few. First of all, let me tell you though, the celebrities on the photo are not the celebrities I'll be talking about. Boo, you whore. Because the idea is that I won't be revealing who these celebrities are, but... I will drop some clues and your mission is to guess who I'm talking about and drop it in the comments. You could just add the number of the story and the person who you think they are. Oh, oh. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh. And if you're right, I might um, message you or, you know, confirm it or not. <laughs> we don't know. Why are you the way that you are? All right, cool. Let's get started. So the first story involves a legendary sports icon. Legend. Wait for it. And I hope you're not lactose intolerant because the second half of that word is dairy. <laughs> no. Legendary. The sports this person played was soccer, football. Un poco caliente por el final. Que mira, bobo. Que mira, bobo. Anda, anda para allá, bobo. Anda para allá. Tranquilo, tranquilo. This person comes on board. He's a super mega star of football. Um, and he, um, he's in first class, of course. Um, he's got a very long flight ahead. So he asks the crew for a little bit of champagne. Nothing wrong with that, right? Except he asks for the whole bottle of Dom Perignon. The whole bottle. I mean, and mind you, like people can take their drinks differently. And, you know, like you can like for me, um, I, I have two glasses of champagne and I'm already done. Um, but the thing is that when you're flying and you're up there, there's less oxygen. And trust me, alcohol hits you way harder than it would on the ground. To the black bow. But anyway, this guy decided he was going to have the whole bottle. Um, on top of that, he had a whole pack of Xanax right there. Maybe he wanted to sleep. The crew brought him the bottle of Dom Perignon um, after takeoff. And half an hour later, he rings the call bell. They go back to him and he had had it all. But not only that, half of the Xanax pack was gone. You'd think they would go back to sleep, right? And not bother anyone. Guess again. After a little while, they started hearing some noise from the cabin. And so the crew went to check and this guy was throwing stuff from his suite, from his first class suite to his girlfriend's suite right across from him. They calmed him down. The guy goes back to sleep. When they land into this destination, they couldn't wake him up. So they try everything. His girlfriend tries everything. His manager tries everything until they manage to kind of wake him up. They tell him he needs to get off the plane because they had already arrived at the destination. And the guy is like, no, there's no way I'm getting out. There's press out there. I don't want them to see me. And there wasn't any press right outside of the door of the plane. Maybe there was some at the airport. We have no idea. I don't know. But the thing is that until the last person disembarks the aircraft, you can't leave the plane. So imagine how annoyed this poor crew must have been. He just sat there and they literally had to call police to escort him out. Um, well, not to escort him because he's a big 
celebrity. So basically to convince them to get off the aircraft. So there you go. That's story number one. Let's go to celebrity story number two. Hey, Rach, maybe your resolution should be to um, gossip less. Well, I don't gossip. No. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard this story, I was so disappointed. I was so heartbroken because I love this singer. So this celebrity was a smooth crooner. Um, that's all I'll say. Uh, he's very popular, of course. Before the flight, the ground staff alerted the crew that this person was a bit worked up. He's, of course, a VIP. He was coming back from performing in South Africa. What happens a lot in flights, and it happens a lot in Africa, is that a big amount of the airplanes that Emirates has are three class airplanes. So you've got first class, you've got business class, and you've got economy class, right? Now you've got an extra luxurious premium economy. But anyway, not counting those, the majority are three class aircrafts. The thing is that uh, sometimes, uh, because of operational reasons, they need the plane for something else, something happened. Um, they change the three class to a two class. So it's just business class and economy. And you can imagine that really doesn't go that well with all passengers. Sir, hey, hey, sir, if you would take a second and take a little sticks out of your head, clean out your ears, and maybe you would see that I'm a person who has feelings and all I have to do is do what I want to do. So ground staff alerted the crew that there was a VAP. He was really worked up because he was downgraded. And, you know, to just be mindful of this guy, right? So when he comes on board, he's super upset. He comes with his wife, he sits, he's rude from the moment he steps on the plane. His wife was completely uncomfortable, but she didn't say anything. And when the crew goes over to him to offer him a welcome drink, and you usually get, in business class, you usually get orange juice or apple juice or champagne, Bev Clico. He goes, oh my God, they wanna poison me. They're trying to kill me, they're trying to poison me. What? He's gays, they're trying to murder me. So it was a whole thing because, of course, uh, you know, the, the purser, who was the person in charge, the supervisor and the rest of the crew, they had to go talk to him because you can accuse people of wanting to poison you for giving you apple juice or oranges. Are you serious? Um, but anyway, this guy was a big disappointment because I love his music. But anyway, there you go. Before we continue, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video so you can keep up with more videos like this and with also travel vlogs and travel trips and tricks. All right, let's keep going. The next story is about a super famous R&B singer who was traveling to Dubai on an A380 aircraft in first class. And I don't know if you know this, but on A380, Emirates A380, they have really nice shower spas. It's not really a spa, but it's basically just, you know, like a bathroom with a shower that you can take for five minutes because the water will cut off at five minutes. The experience is, you know, kind of like spa-like. So this guy decides that he's going to the back because towards the back in business class, you've got the lounge which is a lounge on board where they serve drinks. You know, you could just, you know, have a snack, hang out with the other passengers. So he goes back there with his girlfriend and they have a drink, they have another drink, they have quite a few drinks. Anyway, nothing weird. And then the crew um, let him know that he had scheduled a shower, right? So he says, okay, um, I'll go back to my seat. They both go back to their seat. Um, but when the crew check on the other passenger, AKA his girlfriend, she's not there. And they start hearing some noises coming from one of the toilets. And you can imagine what was going on in there. So uh, I'm on my way back to the bathroom. <laughs> Yeah, all right, all right, just keep walking, all right? I know you're probably thinking, who are they bothering? I know, but the thing is that, don't forget, this is a Middle Eastern airline. There are very clear rules of decorum that you can't really mess with. And unfortunately, it's up to the crew to make sure that people follow the rules, especially because if you, and, and this is something that 
I, th I think everyone should know because otherwise <laughs> the crew look like the bad guys. But if as a flight attendant, you don't say anything on Emirates, right? That, you know, someone is doing something they're not supposed to. And then someone else complains that, you know, you saw this and you didn't say anything, then you would get in trouble and you would probably lose your job. You're fired. So anyway, they realize they're both in there and then the purser, who was a bit of a chicken, decides to call the supervisors from other cabins who are not in charge of first class because the only person in charge of first class is the purser. And she says, you know, you need to tell this um, R&B singer to get out of the toilet. <laughs> I almost said his name. Toilet because he's, you know, doing the deed with his girlfriend and he can be doing that. And of course, the, of course, the supervisors and the crew who, who this person was telling that to were like, we're not going to like tell this person to get, are you serious? We're not going to say anything. That's your job. At the end of the day, no one said anything. And this R&B singer had a great time on the flight, if you know what I mean. The last two stories, I've, I saved them for last because... Oh my gosh. To be honest with you, one of them, I kind of feel bad for the celebrity. And the other one, from who this person is, it does not surprise me that they acted this way. And I would have loved to be on that flight to tell her to calm down. Like, that would have been fun. Or not. I don't know. You think you're too cool for school. But I got a newsflash for you, Walter Cronkite. You aren't. This story involves a pop star and a few, <laughs> I'm not going to give you the name again, but if you Google a few of the facts here, you'll figure out who it is. This is um, someone who was traveling to Saudi, right? They were traveling to Saudi. They came on board. They were super nice to everybody. And when one of the crew saw them, he was like, I need to get a photo with her. She's amazing. Da, da, da. So he asked. She said yes. They took the photo. The celebrity disembarked. She had a great time. Nothing happened there. The problem came right after. So Saudi flights are turnaround flights. So what happens is that the aircraft stays on the ground for a couple of hours and then they go back to Dubai. While they were on the ground, this guy decides to tweet the photo with a caption saying, I can't believe I had this person on the flight. They were amazing. I hope you have a great stay in Saudi. So happy to have you on board or something along those lines. The guy gets back on the flight, does the flight, lands back in Dubai. And as soon as the plane door opens in Dubai, he's got his manager waiting for him there. Now, I don't know if you know this, but anytime you've got your manager waiting for you on arrivals, it's not a good thing. It's actually a super bad thing. And you better brace yourself because there's something going on and it ain't gonna be pretty. So he asked the, you know what, what's going on and the manager says did you tweet out this photo his tweet had gone viral right and he said oh my god yes and he said okay uh we need to talk <laughs> and he proceeded to tell him how this pop icons manager had contacted the airline saying that because he had given away the pop icons locations a story broke out it was like a confirmation that she was dating this saudi this very prominent saudi men and uh, it was it was messy because she didn't want it to get out guess what happened to the male flight attendant Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye-bye. He completely lost his job. They fired him. I met this guy. He told me this story and I was like, that was you? He was like, yeah. He was laughing about it like years later. He's like, I can't believe I did that. That was so stupid. And I just told him, yeah, that was very stupid. But anyway, <laughs> he's a super nice guy though. I can't go to Taco Bell. I'm on an all carb diet. God, Karen, you are so stupid. <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't think there was anything wrong in what the manager did because, you know, these are celebrities. You have to be so careful. There's PR involved. There are a bunch of different things, you know, they're public images. So you, obviously they take care of themselves and how they look. And it's also sensitive information, you know, it's security. You don't to give away someone's location who do you think this person is drop it in the comments and the last story save the best for last this is 
a pop diva. And I want to say the word diva very, I want to highlight that word because to me, she's always been a diva. And honestly, after hearing this story, I was like, well, yeah. So super long flight again, flying out of New York. And um, she comes on board with a huge like kind of like rack of like all of her costumes, clothes and everything and tries to bring it on board. And the crew tell her like, I'm, I'm sorry, but we can't, there's no way we can fit this in here. Um, we don't have space, it's a, it's a super long flight. Um, and she just said, I don't care, figure it out. Please bore someone else with your questions. They, of course, didn't take the rack. They just took the clothes and try to figure out, like, find space for everything. Because when you do these long flights, the closets and everything that there is on board, they're filled with, like, extra blankets, extra amenities, extra water, extra everything. So, anyway, she, who was with her boyfriend at the time, who's not with her anymore, walks on board. They sit in first class. And she begins to tell the crew, don't talk to him. If you want to take his order for anything, you come and talk to me. I don't want you to address him. I don't want you to talk to him. You talking to me? You talking to me? You talking to me? I think she's, she seems like a very controlling and very jealous person. So it kind of made sense to me. So the crew basically had to take care of the other passenger, AKA her boyfriend through her. It was very weird. And from what I was told, she was very nasty throughout the flight. So if you want to know who it is, I'll give you a couple of extra clues. She was very big in the early 2000s. Um, and then she's still pretty big now. Super talented dancer okay singer in my opinion but anyway so that's it for today's video let me know in the comments who you think these different people are and if you want to hear more stories or for me to address different rumors of what it's like to work as a flight attendant or flying tips whatever it is that you want to know drop it in the comments because i would love to create more videos like this if you guys like them i'll see you next time